So, why does your video look terrible? How's it going, everyone? PewDiePie here. PewDiePie! Well, as a filmmaker, it is your job to compile what we call the story. Story is all that matters. Story is golden. But within the story, there are things like color grading, the sound design, production, lighting, things like that. Now, keeping in mind that the story is always the main priority to keeping people connected and feeling something. Everything serves the king. All of this is just here to serve the story. Color grading your film is definitely a crucial aspect of maintaining that audience retention and making your video look good. How do we stop our viewers from doing this? Hello? In this video, I'm going to walk you through what I do to color grade my videos. That is not an extreme way that you can also accomplish yourself in whatever kind of free program that you have. In this video, I'm specifically going to use Premiere Pro, but there are other programs out there that you can accomplish the same results with. Before we get into it, on this channel, I make films about social media topics, freelance gigs, and the behind the scenes of that, filmmaking tips, and photography tips. So if you want to see videos like this, make sure that you hit subscribe and thumbs up this video so that you can expect more and never miss one. I'm going to be using a scene from a short film that I made in my university as a student project. If you think about a futuristic film that has sort of robotic technology that enables you to be whoever you want to be and without it you are basically nothing, quote unquote, then that's what this example is going to be about. The film is called Habilement. It's not just the clothes. It is a film that I starred in and worked beside the director as the editor for this film. So I'm gonna walk you through how I would color grade it this time around because the time beforehand, well, it's quite a difference. However, I think it's important that we keep in mind that the way that I color grade this film is not how you should color grade yours, but find a way to make it presentable. If your film needs a orange or blue color grade, then do that. Set the atmosphere to your audience to something that is believable. In giving context to this scene, we are pretty much in this building of this technology. And I am an employee for this company that is building this technology. There is a rebel because she believes that you are supposed to be your authentic self without the extra help. She wants to be a human and not half cyborg. And during this time, I am having trouble with the coding of my computer. She is a programmer who is coming in to help as a programmer in disguise because, well, she's the rebel, so she's trying to take down this whole operation. So the atmosphere is she is not where she's supposed to be. She is sneaking into this place that she is not allowed by gaining access as the programmer, but in reality she's trying to be very sneaky and doing this in a, in a very manipulative way. Eventually she gets me to go on her side. As far as the premise goes, um, this footage is actually really green and yellow and I wanted to color grade it and show you guys how I do that in order to set the scene for this kind of gloomy, dark, and dangerous area that she's putting herself through. So in this scene that I'm showing you guys, this is actually a scene where I meet up with her for the first time and we kind of conversate and she's letting me know her point of view on why she's rebellious towards this technology and you can differentiate it because I'm wearing this sort of necklace because obviously this is a student film, not high budget, so that's what we had as kind of a character diversity type of thing. One of the things that we could point off right off the bat is my shirt and shoulders as well as the walls in this room. They are all overexposed because you can see as like the highlights of my shoulders, they are blown out. So we want to avoid that, only we don't want to fix something that we can't go back to and change later on. So one of the most approachable ways to color grading and I think it's one of the most efficient because you could also go back and change whatever you have already done is using an adjustment layer so you go to new item then adjustment layer and you keep all these settings the same hit okay and here's your adjustment layer so you can go ahead and drag this over the raw footage or whatever edited footage you have and what this is basically going to do is well it's kind of self-explanatory so it adds a layer and within that layer you can add whatever kind of color color correction, brightness, saturation, hue, things like that and it'll only add it to this layer and whatever is underneath it. Whatever is permanent is in that layer itself. So if I wanted to, if I had already color graded this, I could easily just drag it off like this and it will not affect this after I drag it off of the top of whatever is underneath it, if that makes any sense. But since we are going to color grade this footage and this is actually the raw, fresh footage, um, so this is even more so yellow and overexposed, but we'll fix that. So once we have put our adjustment layer over whatever we are going to color grade, we go to these two arrows right here and we can go to effects. Once we are in effects, we go to our video effects uh, and then our color correction down here. 
Now, if you're working in Premiere Pro or Final Cuts or anything that is more of a professional standard grade editing software, you will have a bunch of options for colors. Uh, but again, we don't have to use all of these. So in this case, I want to focus mostly on the exposure or brightness and the color of it. And color is a broad term, but we want to mess with the hues of everything in this uh, broad clip. But I think it's important to ask yourself why you want to change the color or hues or any kind of atmosphere or the tones of anything. This is actually more so of a grade that you would use in springtime and if you were running through a meadow and had a scene of happiness. But this is a more so serious scene so we're gonna make it, we're gonna go for a more blue tone. So what I like to do is start here on the brightness and contrast. We'll go ahead and click and drag that over onto this layer. And after we have done that, we'll go here to the color balance, drag that as well. And then we'll drag this color balance HLS. Now with color grading, the reason why I'm only going with these three options is because this gets a lot done for you in terms of how everything looks. But if your computer, if the computer you're working on is a laptop or something that can't handle a lot going on with it, you'll have a lot of trouble getting everything edited and rendered out um, in an efficient time manner. So some of the color grading can take you a couple of hours and if it's a computer that can't really handle it, it might take you 10 hours. So it's pretty important to find that balance of what your computer can handle versus what you're actually going to go for the look. So once you have actually clicked and dragged everything onto this adjustment layer, nothing has changed yet obviously, but what we can now see here is we have all of these options. These are a bunch of different levels of things that we can change. Here we now have the options for our brightness, our contrast, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights of everything in here, which is exactly what we're going for, so this is perfect. And then you still ha also have the hue, lightness, and saturation, which is what we're also going to mess with. So that's one thing to differentiate versus like the color balance and the color balance HLS. One has, well, deals with more so the shadows, midtones, and highlights, and one kind of deals with the more broad hue, lightness, and saturation. Now the goal here is to make it more so blue and dark and gloomy, but not too heavily. And the reason why it's not too heavy is because while this is not shot in nighttime, there are surrounding lights around us, this room is lit up, and what we're just trying to do is use that light to our advantage and just make it easier on the eye and make it make sense. So before I actually get deeper into this color grade, I wanna know from you guys if you have ever color graded your footage why or why not? Because I think that it really helps set the atmosphere for the story that you're trying to tell. In some cases, it's completely necessary. In this case, this movie is supposed to have this, this certain feel, as it is a dystopian film. It is the government against the world and trying to overthrow that uh, power, per se. But there's also the case that you're just trying to film maybe a family home video and you don't want to color grade this. So, which one do you prefer? I prefer both, it just depends, but let me know down in the comments below your opinion. Okay, so the way that I usually start it off, and make sure that you do have your adjustment layer selected, uh, because if these individual clips are selected, you will not be able to go back and change that once you have rendered everything out, and it might mess it up in that case, and you'll have to go back and recolor grade it with the adjustment layer. I will usually start off with the brightness, and this is exposed correctly, this part is exposed correctly, however, the rest of it isn't, and if we wanna go for a darker vibe, a more neutral and not neutral, but a more blue and dimmed out, dark kind of atmosphere, well, we could just lower the brightness by a little bit in that case. So since this shot is more so exposed properly and we want to keep the textures in our hair and whatnot, we could just go a little bit more down to the left at a negative 0 0.06 or somewhere around that realm. You don't want to go too heavy on the numbers themselves because a little bit will go a long way and if, well, to the untrained eye, it will become very, very stylized. I'm not saying that I have a trained eye at all, but um, yeah, it will look a bit off for anyone in that case. So we can go for negative six on both of these. And after that, we're not gonna actually start on these shadows, midtones, and highlights yet because those are more specific fine tuners. Um, but what we can do is mess with this hue. And since the general color of this is a bit more on the yellow side and we're going for a blue, well, we can go to the right and add a bit of more green. It'll help us as a foundation or establishment of color to make the rest. And the lightness itself will help us a little bit in this case because it's not more so dragging every little detail detail and bringing it um, to brighter or darker, but it is grabbing the entire thing and doing that. So in that case, it's a little bit less dramatic. And like I said, we are going for a darker tone in this. So a negative, I would say a negative four would do as well in this case. Now, yes, I am eyeballing this, but since this is a film and every unique film 
is, well, unique to you, that's something that you should be able to do. And if you are working with a director yourself, they should be able to tell you, well, this is how I want it to look, and that is how you'll know whether if it's too bright, too dark, if the color is off or not. But to say that for every film you're going to know exactly where to place these numbers and the colors of everything, that's not too accurate. And since we are trying to go for a gloomy type of vibe, this has a lot of color in it, so what we're going to do is actually take some color out. Again, not too much. So it seems like if we go to a negative 11 in this case, that takes out a lot of the colors that really pop because again, we're trying to go for that gloomy atmosphere. So once we have these set and our brightness and contrast set, now we're able to go to our more intricate type of color balance. Okay, so this is the conversation, this really intense, um, I don't agree with you and why don't you agree with me and what is the problem here with the coating in the back. So this is an intense scene. I don't really understand why you feel the need to wear that kind of stuff. Why? Right. I mean, why wouldn't you want to wear these? Like, y you can be anything you want, whenever you want. Do you think that it'll solve your problems? That's exactly what I'm telling you. You need this to be able to survive in the modern day world. Bullshit, I don't believe it. It's just, it's fake to me. I, d I don't understand why people think that putting on this facade and these clothes can change who they are deep down inside. This is where this color will really take place and help us set the atmosphere for the rest of the film. So what we want to do is really help take out a lot of the reds and yellows. So we'll go to a negative 13 on this shadow red balance. And messing with the shadows in this case will really help us set the mood because if you mess with the shadows, well the shadows are the darkest part of your film, that's how it's always going to be. So the darkest parts of your film becoming even darker will really help elevate everything else. We want to really pay attention to the blues and make sure that those are really prominent. In this case, the blues are really missing in these shots, so we want to really help elevate and bring those out. So it's okay if we have a negative 13, negative 10, and a positive 51. And so at this point, we could actually just take a second because we have already made a huge difference in the color of this of all of these shots. So how we can see that and the progress that we've made, well, we can move this adjustment layer. So right now, as you can see, it has a lot more blues and it has a lot more darker tones going rather than the yellow and the huge green that was there. Huge, um, that's not a really good word, is it prominent? So we'll just drag this across. So as you can see, when we do take off the adjustment layer, you can see how we started off with. It's very orange, yellow, and it almost looks like the sun is right in front of us. But once we drag it back across, it really, really helps bring out those blues and the darker, more intense tones that this movie is supposed to feel like. But we're not done yet. So as this room and the color of, well, what this was filmed with, it was very yellow and green, we can actually take out a lot of that. So it's a lot of reds, a lot of oranges, yellows, and the greens, and we're trying to bring back the blues and purples and everything. Well, I guess you can include the whites in that because you want your whites to stay looking white. And again, we are at the midtones for the blues, and you can see, so if I go all the way to the end of 100, you can see how it really, really, really makes it blue and saturated, but we don't want that saturated look. We also don't want to go to the opposite end of the spectrum and make it very, very green because that's what we had too much of in the first place. So we want to have this healthy balance. So it really seems like a positive 20 points will help us really bring out those blues without making them feel way too much, way too in your face per se. I feel like I repeated it a lot of times in this video already, but we want that gloomy vibe. So instead of bringing the highlights of the reds up as it makes it more of a summery vibe, we want to bring them down. So instead of a positive 31 in the spectrum, we go to a negative 31 in the spectrum, and these are the highlights of reds. So this is really dragging out those reds and leaving those established prominence, blues, purples, and, and the whites, that really makes them help balance out. And again, even though this is the green, there was already green, her jacket is green, that text is green, so we want to actually go the opposite way and add the magentas to these greens. So. A negative 11 looks pretty good. So one rule of thumb that you guys can always use to make sure everything looks natural and not over stylized is looking at your whites. Anything that is meant to be gray, white, anything like that, uh, you wanna try and keep it as close to that as you can. So my shirt isn't a complete white, it's more of a beige and gray, so that is okay. However, I'm using this top of the screen over here as my rule of thumb because this is the most white thing that we are dealing with in this case. So basically by the end of 
about those adjustments if you want to go back and check you can see as far as the blues go everything is pretty much elevated we really brought out the blues in the shadows the blues in the midtones and the blues in the highlights and that is basically what our goal was to make it the blues and purples and the whites prominent and bring everything down make you really notice that well this is not a happy place this is a place of discomfort what I mean is the original footage that you saw was yellow right so that is the original color correction that you set your camera settings to. You can really see that everything just goes back to this kind of, well, mustard mush of lighting and color. One way that you can tell if it looks bad in the first place is if my actual skin tones match what she's wearing. That's not supposed to happen. Everything in your film should not just be one color unless that is the intent. So my skin tones, my shirt, her skin tones, her shirt, our eyes, those things should have relative tones and, and color to them. Everything is a bit more calming to the eye. It's not just this yellow extremity that is flashing everywhere. So yeah, it made a huge difference. Now the thing that we have to consider after we have color graded this is to think about how long it's gonna to take to render this. If my computer could handle it, I would go way deeper and mess with curves or there's a lot of different examples of color grading and ways to approach it and there's a lot more intricacies that go into this but this is a huge difference and it's subtle not too complex and it works so yeah guys that's how i color grade my films again i don't do this all the time whenever i do do it these are the things that i pay attention to and whether or not it's a complex color grade it still works and it still makes a huge difference as far as what the audience sees and how it makes them feel so it is very very important to consider that for your videos and movies and whatever you're making if you have enjoyed this video don't forget to leave that comment down below and like this video letting me know that i provide you guys with value and that you enjoyed watching and if you'd like to see more of these because i'd be happy to show you guys more so of movie making stuff. Alright, so my battery's about to die, it's blinking at me, but yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed again. More of these videos to come in the future. I hope you guys have a good day or night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.